Hello, hello, morning, y'all. Um, I, I know uh, we're sh we should be getting started here in just a second. Um, Taylor's hopping over to that other uh, Google Hangouts meeting to wrangle some folks. So we'll be starting in just a sec. Morning. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Laura. Um, yeah, we can record this and, and send it over. No problem. All right. It looks like everybody that was in the Google Hangout is jumping over to this now. Perfect. So, um, apologies to anyone for confusion <laughs> on that. Uh, Ryan's asking if this will be recorded. Did yeah, you say it yeah. would be recorded, um, Tim? Link after, so. Okay, cool. Um, we can get started in a couple minutes. Just after we uh, let if, I see some people are still joining. Laura, do you want to let us know when you feel like everybody's here um, that we should go ahead and get started? Cool. Yeah, let's go ahead and start. Um, that sounds good, Laura. Um, yeah, hey, Fuga folks, welcome. Uh, I think we're just going to take today to do a quick uh, walkthrough uh, refresher series um, on just how to use Foundy. Uh, instead of, uh, there's a set of free tools in Foundy, um, which are some of the things that you may be familiar with, uh, pre-save pages, uh, you know, geo pages, listen now pages, all of that stuff, um, as well as advertising tools. Uh, generally, we we you know when we do these walkthroughs, we do like to go through the uh, you know the sort of link tools, you know the sort of free to use tools first before we go into the ad stuff. But um, Taylor's handling uh, the walkthrough on the ad stuff uh, first, and uh, he has to jump um, in thirty. So I'm going to let him uh, just get through the ad stuff really quickly, and then we can um, at the thirty minute mark or whenever Taylor's wrapped up, uh, we can jump into um you know the walkthrough on the preset pages and the listen now pages and all that good stuff so yeah taylor do you want to go ahead and get started yeah thanks tim um let me share my screen so that you all can see what i'm looking at here i am gonna be we're gonna be just in uh, our dashboard account for i'm sorry our customer service account um so some of the data that you see here could be a bit erroneous in the sense that it comes from random test campaigns and test pages that we've created, but it'll serve a good good kind of uh, example purpose, if nothing else. And to back up a little bit, just so that everybody, I don't know if I've connected with everybody on the call yet, but um, I'm Taylor. I'm with uh, Foundy, of course. I tend to work with our clients on their advertising strategies, as Tim was mentioning. So uh, really focus in on ways to use the advertising components of the platform. So um, when we jump into ads, um, 
will uh, before I jump in, we'll just kind of talk a little bit really quickly at the dashboard level, what you're seeing. So you can see your advertising campaigns. You can see a snapshot of some of the data that Tim will talk about later about how all that's captured. Um, but then we'll jump into setting up ads. So just for kind of general knowledge, I have, you know, of course, a lot majority of our users use all of the pre save pages, the landing page tools, the links and all of that. Um, but I have plenty of other clients that maybe um, aren't using all of the functionalities of some of the tools that Tim will show you, but still use our advertising platform to drive traffic over to let's say they use link fire. Uh, for an example, I was on a call, call with Merge Records this morning, and they're using Foundy for advertising. They're short linking and, and uh, building audience data through Foundy for remarketing purposes, but they're still driving traffic over to their existing kind of landing page um, that lives outside of the Foundy ecosystem. So if you have a client that isn't using Foundy pages or for whatever reason doesn't want to make that huge shift, um, we can still support their advertising efforts. So what you're seeing here are a few different ad op offerings that we have. I'll start just by kind of highlighting each. Obviously, you see Spotify Audio and iHeart Audio here. This is, these aren't something that we see necessarily a ton of use on Foundy, um, where I think the value in the Spotify, for example, is there is no minimum spend on our platform for these audio ad placements. So there is, if you have somebody that has a limited budget, they could come in here and execute an audio campaign. It's not something that we necessarily recommend all the time, but it is here. Spotify does limit, at least currently, some of our inventory. So, uh, you know, if you have a client that has a budget, they're probably going to work directly with Spotify if they're a label that's working with Foo already. So, um, but so that you know they are there. Uh, our newsletter banners, these are going to be, I don't know how many of you have ever dealt with like a bands in town newsletter, but it's similar in the sense that what you're doing is is basically getting an ad placement into a third party newsletter. Uh, bands in town is the closest thing I had to compare it to. The difference is with Bands in Town, you're essentially creating a newsletter that you're sending out to fans of either your artist or affinity fans or affinity artists. Um, with ours, you're not actually building out a list of, say, 10,000 emails that are going through Bands in Town that sends it out, but you're actually getting a, a placement in a third party newsletter. So, as you can see here, you know, Rolling Stone, GQ, Pitchfork. Uh, we have two different offerings here. Uh, one would be our music um, uh, premium music inboxes, which are those Rolling Stone Pitchfork examples. We also have a max inbox uh, offering, which is going to be a wide variety of newsletters. It could be anything from New York Times to TechCrunch to I've seen Groupon, uh, quite a big variety. Um, this isn't something that we see a ton of use. It's probably, if anything, I see more use cases on the uh, the live side than I do the recorded side of the industry. Um, you know, folks might target for a festival lineup announce or a tour uh, tour announce across 10 different dates. They can target that that those specific geo segments. Um, the difference too, with, uh, to point out with this versus bands in town is that um, our newsletter is you're only charged if an impression is actually served. So if somebody in, you know, New York gets opens an email uh, newsletter from a GQ or Rolling Stone in this example, and a banner gets placed that is your banner that served programmatically, that's when you're charged that impression. So the difference is bands in town, they charge based on the number of emails. We're only charging if you actually get an impression served. Uh, I would mention if anybody has any questions, you know, feel free to drop a, uh, a comment or um, a question in the chat and we can address any questions around advertising. Um, so then the two probably, you know, majority of use cases where our advertisers are spending their time are going to be between these web and mobile ads and our video ads. Um, we'll start with video ads. These are going to be uh, premium video, video placement. So if we jump in here, I'll just show you uh, just, you know, so that you know, the process of building out an ad campaign is super easy and efficient. And all of these different ad offerings essentially have the same flow for building that campaign out. So it's all on one page right here, pretty straightforward. Um, so if we filled out this info, I just want to talk really about video stuff. We'll go into more of like an example setup on the uh, on the web and mobile ads. But with video, these are going to be your targeting. So CTV is connected streaming televisions. That could be an actual TV. Like I, for example, use an Amazon TV where we're streaming any content that we're watching. It could also be a Roku device or Apple TV, as you see here as an example. These are really high premium uh, impression placements because they're being served potentially in people's living rooms as they're watching whatever programming they're, you know, they've chosen to watch. So um, the one caveat right now, anyways, with our video advertising is that it's on, 
basically like 98% of our inventory is uh, spe specifically in the US. So um, this is probably going to be more relevant for any clients that are marketing music in the US or ba US based, of course. Um, we're working with our data provider to hopefully expand that into some European countries as well. They're just there aren't as many offerings or uh, accessibility when it comes to inventory on the on the European side. And Tim can speak a little bit more to that if anybody has any specific questions too. But um, the other option here is non CTV. So in addition to literally being in somebody's living room as somebody's as they're watching, you know, their favorite sports programming or their, you know, uh, new nightly news, uh, you could also be on web and mobile devices. So the difference here is going to be, it could be me that's using a, uh, in, in the States here, it's direct TV stream is one of our, our kind of cable streaming cable offerings. Um, that's the one that I've used in the past. So like I might watch programming on my laptop or on my desktop computer or on my phone through the direct TV stream app. So that could be this placement, but this could also be pre-roll video within mobile apps or um, website. So on rollingstone.com, there might be a video that somebody clicks on. And before you can watch that video, there's always a 15 to 30 second commercial that you have to watch before that actual video you're uh, attempting to watch starts. So pre-roll video. The cool thing about these video ads is that they're, you're charged on a cost per completed view. So, you know, you're talking about a 15 to 30 second commercial that cannot be skipped like some in-stream ads can. You know, you don't have an average watch time of three seconds with the sound off here. These are going to be, you know, you're, you're paying on a cost per complete of view. So really strong brand impressions here and awareness uh, campaigns. The targeting is going to be a little bit different than what you might think when you're typically placing digital ads. Um, you're thinking about the programming that your potential fans might be watching. So there's over 1,200, we call them deal publishers here. Uh, you can see across the top, there's some different kind of categories as well. Um, or you can kind of look at all and, and, and just search through here. Um, let's say that somebody wanted to be on ESPN. We have, you know, Disney, which includes uh, the run of network here, includes ABC, ESPN, all of these things that you're seeing, Hulu, Nat Geo. So uh, there's a few different kind of approaches to this. If any of your clients want to dig in or want to chat through strategy um, and get a little bit further into planning something like this, I'd be happy to chat with them. Um, and from there, you just upload your video. We do require a URL. Um, it does not necessarily going to drive a mass amount of clicks like some of your display or digital campaigns would. But uh, in the, a case that it could be a pre-roll video, for example, or on a mobile application, if you're watching, you know, news on CNN or something, and there's that pre-roll video, uh, that's the case where you might see a click come through. I have a, a festival client um, that's running some of these right now, and they're heavy in the rock space. The, the clients Danny Wimmer presents, and they're targeting like NHL um, sports, barstool sports, um, very specific kind of type of programming that rock music fans might be watching. Uh, and they're really, really happy with the results. It's again, uh, really cost. Oh, I don't think I mentioned that the average cost per completed view is less than five cents currently. So when you're talking about that, kind of comparison across other platforms. It's a really valuable uh, touch point with a video. Um, from a creative standpoint, you might have a, a voiceover call to action telling folks to tell your smart speaker to play this latest single or album release. Um, you could also throw a QR code on that video as a potential like scan. Uh, the one thing I've noticed with these is that while you don't have the ability to skip them, if you're streaming content, you typically do have the ability to rewind it. So it's a, you know, a QR code might be a good thing to throw into one of these as well. Um, so uh, the other kind of important, I think, and, and probably our, our most widely used currently offering is going to be these web and mobile ads. Um, these are going to be your standard display banners that you might see across the web. Um, let's just go through an example here. Let's say uh, I'm just going to name it test campaign. So you can see how easy the process is. Let's say I have a single drop in tomorrow. Um, we're going to run a two week campaign here. Uh, with these, we don't have any minimum spends on display ads. I should mention with the video ads, the CTV stuff, there is a $500 minimum spend. With these, it, all of the rest of the ad offerings, there is no minimum spend. So, you know, we have uh, clients that are running $150, $200 campaigns. Um, and then we have, you know, the larger labels that are running $20,000, $30,000 campaigns, just depending. So I'm just going to use $500 as an example. You'll see that it takes that $500 and averages it on a daily spend across these flight dates that you're seeing here. Um, it's not going to be an exact amount every day. It's going to, you know, be roughly in that range um, to average it out across the flight dates. 
Uh, this targeting, we have international inventory. So, you know, you could target multiple countries. Uh, let's see, United States. Um, let's say we're also going to do United Kingdom. So you can put as many uh, or as few locations as you want. I mean, we see uh, typically I would see some folks a lot of times kind of segmenting out the countries. Uh, you don't have to do that. One thing to note is that it's evenly going to split this spend across whatever your location targeting is. Um, you could also get more granular and do if you're doing tour marketing, which I know most of you are probably working with clients on release strategies, not necessarily uh, the live side, but you can get granular in like zip codes or specific cities or DMAs or counties, even depending on um, where you're marketing. So this is where I think it gets really interesting, where a lot of folks really find the value. Again, Merge is a perfect example. He was telling me, uh, the marketing director this morning was telling me how they just ran, they released an album, they went to Pace Magazine. Um, they were, I forget what the budget they had to spend was, but the CPMs on Pace Magazine were $13. So we have pro, uh, domain targeting and these two different groups. So if we're talking about premium sites, Pace Magazine is a perfect example of that. Um, these are preset groups that we've built as Foundy. So if we look at, let's say, rock domains, you can see here there's 73 domains in our premium list. The, the goal and optimization for this is actually getting maximum impressions on those premium sites. So if I click manage, you actually can see these different domains that people can now get placements on without having to go directly to Pace Magazine and buy ads direct. So let's say we don't want Spotify or MTV. You can remove those from this list and we could then rename this Fuga. Oh, let me type correctly here. Fuga Rock, you know, Fuga Custom Rock Premium Sites. So let's say in that example uh, that we just mentioned, maybe you don't want some of these other, um, you know, sites on here. But in addition to this, you also want to be on some premium news outlets. You could add in newyorktimes.com, uh, bbc.com, um, espn.com. You could add these in and then essentially create your own custom targeting list. So it's really valuable if you're trying to run a lot of campaigns, but you want to have segmented lists that are specific to different artists. You can basically create these uh, custom lists and they'll save and store in your Foundy account. So it's not going to be open to the rest of the users to see. It's just in your account. Um, I'm not going to save this one, but I'll show you an example. As you scroll down here, you see all these different example kind of domain lists that we've created. Um, let's look at this one, for example. So I just created a custom Americana list. Uses a lot of our existing Americana, but then I think I added in, I added in like NPR, New York Times, I think LA Times maybe. Um, but so you can see that these save here. Now you might ask like, what's the value of doing Foundy and trying to get on these sites versus just going direct? This is where uh, the value really lies. So um, as I mentioned, my example, uh, Pace Magazine, they were, I think, I don't remember, he didn't tell me what his minimum spend was, but um, you know, Rolling Stone, last time we checked with Rolling Stone, they had like a 10K minimum spend. CPMs were like 17 to $22 averages. I mentioned the Pace Magazine example was a $13 CPM. On average, our premium domain placement CPMs come in at less than $5. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes on the uh, reporting. Uh, just to note, we do also have this other option for domain targeting. Um, you can see here, if we're comparing the rock, there's 377 domains in the max click side versus the 73 on the premium side. Uh, the difference here is going to be obviously a much broader list of domains. So you might also get those 73 premium sites. But in addition to that, it might be longer tail websites that report on, you know, entertainment news or culture or it could be lyric sites. Um, so optimized on this max click side, of course, to drive traffic and clicks. Um, you can't do both. You have to do one or the other. I probably see and and. I think it's fair to say that I see more folks really looking to us for the value of getting on these premium domains. So um, this is where a lot of folks spend time. Now, in addition to the domain targeting, we also have these interest targeting segments. This is going to be third party data that comes from our data provider and other data providers that send data to these sell data to these exchanges. Really broad category. So, you know, you don't we definitely have music um, segments, which we'll talk about. But, you know, if you know that the music somebody's putting out is uh, targeted to people that like the outdoors. Um, you know, you could target people that drive Subarus, for example. 
Um, so if we talk specifically about music, you can type in music here and you'll see all the different types of targeting we have, you know, 80s, 90s, early 2000 music lovers. Of course, you have some genre specific targeting. You have people looking up concert music festivals online. Um, we even have, let's see, Apple. We even have Apple Music users. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you definitely want to target people that are streaming music, you can do that here. Um, we also have Spotify segments. A um, lot of stuff here, uh, you know, I would say feel free to kind of get in and poke around. As Tim mentioned, it's free to set up a Foundy account and it's free to run ads. Of course, you have to have an advertising budget, but there is no fee or minimum spend as we just talked about with the exception of those video ads. So let's say we're going to add some music stuff in here. I'm just going to pick a couple. Now, what you'll see is that what this is going to do is it's not narrowing your audience for people that are visiting these sites that also like these types of interests. It's actually, if you're familiar with like a Facebook ads or meta, it's essentially separating them into two different ad sets. So half of your spend would go towards placements on these premium domains and the locations that you've selected. The other half are going to go to people that live within or that, that fall within these interest based audiences um, with, within where they're living. So if I love come, Cumbia music, cumbia music, I don't even know. I'm sure, I imagine that's Latin, but um, if I'm falling in that group, I could get an ad served to me anywhere across the web that display advertise, display advertisements are allowed, programmatically speaking. Um, so it's a way to reach people wherever they are because they fall within a certain interest as opposed to reaching people that are on a specific premium domain that you're trying to get placements on. So from there, uh, you don't really need to worry too much about optimizations. The platform will automatically update based on what your selections are up here. Um, then you just drop your URL in, which we would love for it to be a Foundy link because that's going to give you even more data. Um, upload your banner sizes. Uh, we have cheat sheets on this, but these are uh, you know the different sizes available that you need to create. These can be static or GIFs that are movable, have movable elements. Uh, and then we also have an HTML5 ad uh, builder on the platform. So if we click on HTML5 ads here, I'll show you an example. Let's see, let's find a good one. Uh, let's do the corn example. Okay, so uh, this is an HTML5 ad unit. This is a 300 by 250. You can see this YouTube video is embedded into the ad and in, into this ad banner. Cool thing with these is it is actually an interactive player. So it really pushes higher engagement and we see um, Average watch times across all of our HTML5 ad units is around 54 seconds. We had a recent uh, case study with the band uh, Collective Soul that they ran one of these with a single release of video. And on the back end of YouTube, you have the ability to see those YouTube insights and analytics, which is where we get that average watch time. They saw an average watch time uh, for the um, Collective Soul from Foundy ads on these premium rock sites, an average watch time of two minutes and one second. So it's a very sticky ad placement. Um, we just rolled this out. This is brand new. We haven't even really made a big push and let people know, but we're now enabling uh, users to create an automated remarketing audience off of those impressions that are served, not just off of people that click through to your website. We'll talk a little bit about that in a moment too. But from there, you just publish the campaign. You can see, again, everything's on one page, super easy and simple to set up. And you click publish and, um, and that's all you have to do. Uh, I'm going to jump into reporting. Uh, one other thing I mentioned before I do remarketing web and mobile is Tim will tell you a little bit about some of the other tools. Uh, we're really built off of building up first party data and, and that kind of ecosystem of, of obviously making becoming a smarter marketer by using this data insights. Fuga team, I'm sure you're well aware of that being that you all provide a lot of re, uh, valuable data for your users as well. So there are ways to, uh, once you build up this audience of 215,000 fans, you could then run a remarketing campaign to those people all across the web. You could also get a little bit more granular, which Tim will dive into on ways to slice and dice audience data to say maybe using one of those embeddable ad widgets, the HTML5 um, banners, you could run, you could embed an Apple music player and target your Apple fans with that music player, driving them directly to Apple instead of sending them to a landing page first. So some really powerful stuff here. Um, let's look at reporting before I have to jump and then I'll let Tim take over. Uh, so. We talked to, I mentioned the automated remarketing. Um, let's just click on, let's just do one of these. This is a test we're running actually using some of my creative for an upcoming show. Let's do one that doesn't have a show actually. This just started, I think, last, yesterday. So there's not a ton of data, but 
Um, what you'll see here is it kind of breaks down conversion based. That's going to be people that actually engage, click the link. Uh, but then now we're, we're basically allowing people to, they'll be able to click on this and, and run a remarketing campaign. So you start with a, your initial campaign targeting these premium websites that we talked about, Pace Magazine, Enemy, Discogs, right? So let's say we run a week campaign with that and you serve 100,000 impressions on, across these premium sites. With this automated remarketing, what we're going to allow folks to do is basically they'll be able to come in here click this button and it'll automatically open up a campaign targeting that audience of people that this ad was just served to on those premium websites, but now across the West rest of the web. So um, Tim can talk a little bit more in, in detail on this too, but when we, we've seen with test, when people have done this, it's increased, you know, everything from uh, clicks and engagements to click through rates and time spent on site anywhere from four to 20% uplift in those things by running this kind of uh, what we call brand lift or brand recall uh, strategy. So when you're looking at this, you can see uh, it's spent $13 so far, CPC is 80 cents and the CPM is $1.22. Again, this is comparing, kind of talking about that paste example. You're looking at placements on these high-end premium sites, but instead of spending $13 CPMs for these placements on paste, we're getting them at an average of $1.22. So really powerful. It allows you to not have to spend a minimum budget on these premium uh, platforms or premium publishers, but you can spread that across multiple publishers and get exponentially more impressions for that same spin versus going direct. Um, you can download this data. Uh, you can see here the different types of banners that were created. This was one. I, it's not a great design. It was just something quick that we were throwing together. And then you could also take this if uh, let's say you were you were running a campaign for one of your clients, um, you could click under actions, you can click share report. It'll open up a new URL that you could then just take and send off to one of your clients to uh, view just that campaign versus all your other campaigns. Um, that feels like a good time since I got to jump and my dogs are going crazy to pass it back off to you, Tim, if you don't mind. Hey, <laughs> thanks Taylor. Um, awesome. So yeah, uh, <clears throat> that's so again, that's all the advertising tools uh, we can now get into our other tools now, which are, uh, you know, generating pre-save pages, short links, uh, listen, now I'm sort of uh, general release pages. Um, again, if any of you have to jump at the 930 mark, uh, we, this session is going to be recorded and we'll share this after. So um, no worries if so. Um, one sec, let me just share my screen. While you're doing that, Tim. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you, everybody, for your time and being here. Please feel free to let anybody or have anybody reach out if you have any questions about advertising to either Tim or myself. Um, but I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you all soon. Thanks, Taylor. Um, again, this is the dashboard that you see when you log into Foundy um, in terms of uh, the tools that are used uh, for creating pages um, and all that good stuff. It's all going to live under the marketing tab as well. So I'm going to jump into pre-save pages first. So say you have a new release, um, you have... Uh, a, a UPC code and we're going to generate a pre-save page for it. So you jump into create pages right here. Um, here are your options for the pages that you can select. Uh, there's a few options. Obviously, you guys are familiar with pre-save pages and music release pages. Uh, you know, pre-save pages convert into music release pages when uh, the release date comes. Um, you know, if you have any of your artists who are also looking for a sort of uh, link tree or link in bio tool, you can actually create one of those super easily uh, with the basic pages tool. But uh, for the purposes of this demo, we're going to go into the pre-save page uh, a tool first and, and create a pre-save page. Um, so yeah, here's the page. Uh, you know, I, if 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 you guys are familiar with this, um, you know, using other platforms, uh, it's fairly simple. You know, you re you enter your release date and time. Uh, let's say that uh, you know this release is coming out tomorrow at your local time, so um, 9 p.m. for me because I am on the West Coast, which is midnight uh, Eastern. Um, we'll hit apply, and then all you have to do is enter the UPC for your album. Um, so I have a UPC that I have saved. Uh, I think is a Fuga artist as well. I'm going to grab this really quickly, um, drop it in here. Um, cool. Um, hold on. I see a question from Laura. Uh, one question I have received is a more general account question. We were told to be smart to create sub accounts for artists and we have the fan data per artist. Can you take up some time to show us how to set up a sub account? Yeah, Laura, uh, no problem. I will definitely do that. Um, so yeah, you go ahead and, and enter this in here. Uh, you uh, hit the 
uh, you enter the artist's name. Um, this is Ray Smith and uh, Vorju is what it's called. Um, and you should be able to go ahead um, and scan this page. Um, where is that button? Oh, let's see. Let's try that again. Um, banner image cannot be empty. Uh, okay, yeah, so we'll go ahead and do this. Um, again, you know, uh, you enter in artist name here. Uh, for this banner, yeah, you can uh, you can drop in an image, uh, which which will be this image as well, um, as well as a widget. So you can also drop in uh, a YouTube embed, let's say for uh, a YouTube video, uh, into this uh, little sort of top window section. Um, for the image, I'm just going to select something random. Um, let's see. Yeah, and when you click finish, uh, this should automatically populate. So um, again, this isn't the right image or the right uh, album name, but um, you know, all of these are again, uh, all of these sort of DSP retailer options are automatically configured. Um, uh, you know, these are all sort of automatically pre-save, pre-add, um, and these do turn into the listen now links uh, when the release goes live. Notice that for some of these DSPs, we don't have that same option. Um, you know, these. Uh, uh, for for Amazon and Gami Bport, um, you know uh, it says after release. So so these uh, DSPs won't be part of the pre-save page. They will go public after um, the uh, uh, release actually goes live. Um, just meaning that you know this release doesn't have or, or these DSPs don't have pre-save capability on them. Um, you know so we have it for Amazon Music, but you know not for the release on Amazon. Uh, obviously, um, you can also you can also change uh, the background uh, of these pages quite easily. Um, again, I'm going to select a random photo, um, and it's really easy to just uh, you know dial in. Um, you know, let's say like a 10% blur uh, to make this look you know nice and pretty. Um, you can also uh, you know apply a, a GIF as the background if you want um, a little bit of animation. Uh, but for the most part, you know this uh, just using the sort of blur feature for the background makes it look um, you know really nice and. Nice and pretty. Um, again, these pages turn into general release pages uh, when the release actually happens. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to edit uh, the, uh, the 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 URL at all, you can you can change that here. So you know, let's call this uh, you know Ray Smith uh, or Zhu, something like that. Um, when you click finish. Uh, this, you know, now your, your URL will be foundy, um, found.ee slash Ray Smith dash um, you know, you can, uh, we'll, and I will show you later on where you can see all of your links in one place. So this is just for the pre-save page. Uh, something really, something other interest, uh, some, something else really interesting that you can do is, um, you know, say, for example, um, you know, you are uh, setting that, that that you want a separate pre-save page or a separate release page for different territories. Say, for example, um, you know, for uh, the French version of the page, we want Deezer to be the top DSP because that is the most used DSP over there. Um, you can scroll down on this right panel to uh, these, the, the, the geo pages section. Um, and essentially what you do is you can just customize uh, different versions uh, of this page for, for different territories. So let's say, you know, we want to customize this page for visitors from France so that visitors from France see a different version of this page um, than everybody else. So let's go ahead and select France. You can add geo. Um, oh, let me save this really quickly first. We go, we go down here uh, again we select France we add geo um, now for the now what you do is you select the French version of the page and you can move this around um, so again um, you can also you know delete certain DSPs uh, for, for different territories so now you know there's a global page um, when people go in they see a global version of the page um, when uh, oh um, and uh, when, when people go into uh, when, pe when people are visiting from France, they see uh, this version of the page uh, that has Deezer as the top DSP. Um, I'm going to go back one more time and just show you uh, a couple other things. 
if you go back into the create pages uh and uh the create pages button and you go into the music release pages uh it's very similar uh it's the same sort of thing um a couple other things you can do on the music on the music release pages you can add store buttons so uh uh for example um you know if you do have uh a shopify uh uh you know the artist has a shopify account that they like to sell merch from um, you know, via their foundry page, they can do so by uh, adding a, their Shopify widget in the bottom. You just need the Shopify embed code. You can add that in. You can also add social media buttons. It's fairly straightforward. For example, you add Instagram, you add the URL, you click save, um, and that's all done. Um, again, with the store buttons, um, you know, when you have uh, a UPC that's ready to go, let's say this one. Um, Uh, let's say you wanted to uh, add additional DSPs or maybe add a link to the email sign up um, or uh, even an SMS sign up link. You can add that down here via the plus store buttons link. So you just add plus store buttons. Uh, let's say, uh, you know, Walmart's not in there and you wanted to add that. You can go ahead and add that and then drop the URL in. Um, if there's any custom places that you wanted to uh, add, let's say, um, you know, the, the artist's uh, store. Um, you can use create your own. Um, and again, you know, you can just upload a little image for uh, the artist store, for example, and, and change the language here. Um, you can also, uh, let's see, create your own all buttons custom. You can also, uh, again, add in a tool for email capture, as well as a tool for SMS capture. So there's a few things that you can use these pages for. Um, again, you know, very similar to the functionality of other uh, sort of smart link aggregate tools if you've used them before. Um, uh, I see a couple questions uh, from Ryan um, as, and Laura as well. So I'm just gonna jump into these really quickly. Um, Ryan, can you go into more detail on setting up the max accuracy portion for store turn? We've had issues before where links don't populate and just want to be able to better explain it to clients and the mechanics behind it. Um, if we have the UPC linked, why would some stores bring back the wrong link and not populate correctly? Um, I'm not. I'm actually not certain about that, Ryan. Um, the uh, our, I, I know that our accuracy is fairly accurate, um, especially as it relates to Amazon Music um, as well as Apple Music. That we are more accurate than Featured.fm. Um, I'm not certain why that link tool is why that issue is happening uh, with the accuracy portion of the store turn. So if you could just send us an email about it, um, like I can dig into that for you. Uh, Laura asks, another question, is it possible to set up a standard order of DSPs for any newly created pre-save pages, for example, to always have Spotify at the number one position? Um, I don't think that's possible, Laura. Um, you just have to configure it, uh, uh, you know, when you set up the page. Um, and Ryan's second question is, you know, can you also show how to do evergreen pre-save pages for when you don't have a UPC or release date yet? Yeah, let me show you that really quickly. Um, so what you do is you go into the pre-save page. Uh, again, this is for if you are creating uh, an evergreen uh, 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 pre-save page. Um, you know, again, you don't have a release, for example, um, and you and you are just uh, creating a page that you know you want to be you want to be able to sort of capture evergreen pre-saves on. Yeah, so what you can do uh, is you can go ahead and enter a release date and time in the in the future. Um, you just have to make sure that when the release date and time comes, uh, that you go in and, and edit this because you know when it when the release date and time does come that you put in here, it'll flip it to a listen now page, which which isn't exactly which isn't exactly accurate. Um, let's see. So let's call this uh, May eleventh, for example. Um, again, when May eleventh comes, you're gonna have to switch this. Um, and uh, you go into the enter artist name and you enter your artist name here. Um, uh, so let's say Ray Smith again. Um, and the album, uh, let's see. You should be able to just go ahead and create this. It's gonna ask me for the header and description and banner image again. Um, but yeah, with those tools, uh, you can go ahead and just create this, um, and the pre-saves will, yeah, be saved for, uh, for if they, if they're able to find, uh, the artist name in there. Um, let's see. Uh, 
sorry guys, I'm just jumping around a little bit. Um, back to the walkthrough sections of it. So we've gone through the pre-save pages, uh, the music release pages, um, adding custom buttons as well as uh, you know adding the SMS button. Um, I wanted to show you a couple other things as well. So um, you know here's an example of what these pages look like. You know when they are completed. Um, so you see, this is a, a, a tool that we use for St. Vincent. This is one of her pages. Um, again, you know, the Shopify links do happen. Uh, they, 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 we are able to populate these at the bottom of these pages. Um, you know, when you add any of this merch to cart, um, this entire checkout flow is done within the page. So the user doesn't have to leave, um, you know, when they uh, are, 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 are looking to you know, buy anything on Shopify. Um, so again, the checkout flow happens in on screen. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of it uh, in terms of the pages. Again, um, you know, I know we don't have a ton of time, so if there's, if anybody has any uh, additional questions, uh, please let me know. Um, I'm usually also not the person who usually does these walkthroughs. Is Randy is out sick this week, so if I'm missing anything um, or you need any more clarity on anything, please let me know, um, and we can jump into it. Uh, going to uh, Laura's question about um, the uh, 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 about you know permissions and how that works, I'll show you that really quickly. So all the permissions uh, for your accounts can be found um, in this right drop-down menu. Um, you know, if you go into the sort of main account that you're that you're working from, and you click drop-down, um, you can you can click view all users, and from here you'll be able to see all the accounts that you have access to. Um, again, this is a test account, a customer service account, so we have a bunch of uh, just random linked accounts um, down here. Um, you can go and toggle into any of them uh, by the sort of actions button, and switch. Um, and then, uh, you know, you're now in the sub account that's under the master account. You can also switch back um, with the button in the top right corner again. If you'd like to create uh, a new account, you go into that same place, um, you know, view all users, and you go in um, and add account. Um, and this is where you go ahead and create an account. So you're not going to just test account. Um, if you turn on uh, simple registration, um, this test account is only linked to your to this main account, um, and you can't access it without accessing uh, through. You, you can't access it without going into the main account first. If you do, if you do turn off simple registration, um, you can enter an email and password, which means that you can then share that email and password so someone can enter into the account with this email password without uh, access to the main primary account. Um, but you know, for the purposes of this, if we just use a simple registration. Uh, the test account is here um, and again if you'd like to switch into it uh, you just drop into the actions um, and switch um, and it'll ask you to accept the agreement and then this is your new uh, sub account um, under your main account um laura i can uh, write something up for you um if that helps and, and send that over um you know for uh, for you to share um, a couple other tools to just run you through uh so we've we've done permissions um and uh, you know a couple other tools that I wanted to, to show you through. So we also have uh, an email capture tool that's right here. Um, again, this email capture tool, the way that this works is uh, it, it, it generates a, a pop-up modal um, that can go onto uh, your artist website um, that is intent-based. So if I just, sh uh, just, I'll show you another example really quickly. Um, I think this is on the actual St. Vincent website. So yeah, from this actual St. Vincent website, um, you know, if you go ahead um, and uh, you know, if, if you're on this website and you go to to exit this website, oh, you'll see that this modal pops up. Um, again, this is something that you can uh, customize and create, uh, you know, within your Foundy account using that uh, that that uh, you know email capture tool. Um, again, they are intent based, so we actually set this one up. So when someone's leaving the page and their mouse cursor goes to the top right corner to exit to another page or navigate to another page, this pops up. Um, and yeah, that's uh, I, th I think that's it um, on, on on our side of things. Um, again, uh, you know, Laura, I will put together those details for you, um, the documentation on setting up sub accounts um, to share. Um, and Ryan, let me go in um, and ask the team uh, about the um, about the scanning issues, um, and we'll see if I can uh, 
get you an answer on that. Um, but yeah, again, um, all this stuff is going to be recorded and shared after. So, uh, you know, if you need anything, just refer back to it or send us an email and we can help you out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, again, if there's any other questions, uh, uh, send us an email um, and let us know. Uh, and yeah, have a, have a good rest of your Thursday, y'all.